after a superb start to the season, we sit on top of the table. Ignore the fact we've only played four games. But the winning continues against Nantes, although only just. They took the lead and held it until the 94th minute when Bassi equalised and then Lamborde scored less than 60 seconds later to give us all three points at the death. A very lucky escape. Then we sign Bellingham on loan on deadline day. The issue is it's Job, not Jude. He didn't feature in our 3-1 win away at 16th in the table Marseille. Instead, Lamborde, Ardazone and Buchmann got themselves on the score sheet before the host scored a consolation goal late on. But now we have a tough task. Our first two Champions League games and PSG in the league. Win all three and we might be on for a spectacular season. Now this is exactly why I've brought Joe Bellingham into the team. We've got three big games in the space of a week and we need to make sure we can rotate our players around to keep them fresh enough. Job has arrived from Chelsea here for the season. He's not as good as our starting two midfielders. He won't be replacing Koba or Busio, or Sila for that matter either. But he's got the edge on Pinto and Radakovic, who will get game time, but it's nice to have some experience in the team. That being said, uh, he's not registered for this upcoming Champions League game, so he cannot play in the Champions League, neither can Holick. That's because we don't have enough homegrown players at the club in the first team, so we need to make sure our youth development is ramping up soon. So let's see what we can do at home against Inter Milan then, shall we? It should be a sold out stage. Stadium. We'll have 42,000 St Etienne fans behind us the entire way, hopefully helping us win the match as a Nan shot is blocked in the six yard area there. Koba picks up the loose ball, finds Fontan who gives the ball away with a heavy touch and Grabara can clear that one for Inter Milan. But of course, this is the big league table that is now occurring in the Champions League in next season in real life, the group stage is dead. The league phase is the new thing. So essentially you're drawn against eight different teams. And the way they're doing it is that in the moment in real life, you have pots, don't you? So the best teams are in pot one, the worst teams are in pot four. You're drawn against two teams from each pot. So you're playing essentially different teams of different... I was focusing on the... Jeez. The point is everyone plays two really good teams, two really bad teams and two in the middle sort of thing. After those eight games, everyone sorted into a league format, three points for a win, one point for a draw and zero points for a loss as we just can't seem to get the ball in the back of the net. Oh, it's so agonizing. The top eight get a buy into the round of 16, ninth to 24th play a knockout round. The winners of that play the winners of these top positions. So once you sort of get your head around it, it's fairly simple actually. I think I probably prefer the group stage. I guess it's slightly different. We get a few more Champions League games. There's four extra teams in the Champions League, which I guess is kind of fun. It'll be interesting to see how it changes things up. I think we're going to miss sort of like the, the death at the end of the group stages. You know, sometimes it was like three teams that can qualify, but only two can go through. As a Nan scores a goal to get us back in level terms here. I think we are going to miss that part of the group stage. That's what I quite like about the group stage is how exciting it can get to the end. But a lot of the time, you can also have situations where two teams just walk it and it's pretty easy, right? So maybe this might create some different dynamics in real life where, you know, things get quite exciting at the end, trying to get into the top eight or trying to get into 24th place at the bottom, for example. I don't know, but we're going to find out next season in real life. Right now, we are 1-1 with Inter Milan and we've been the way better side despite Inter having more possession. We've had loads more shots and a much higher XG. Just whilst I'm thinking about the depth of the team as well, obviously we brought Bellingham in. A lot of you guys said in the comment section, actually, wait till deadline day to get some cheap loans. And Bellingham is a cheap loan. I think we're just paying his wages, maybe like a little bit for like per match, but it's not much, I don't think. It might be like 10 grand a month, I should say, sorry. Uh, in terms of, you know, sometimes they want like a million pound a month, right? Which is ridiculous. So it's a cheap deal for Bellingham. We're not paying all his wages either. I did look for centre backs and right backs and left backs, but there was no one who was particularly good. They come in just for the sake of coming in, essentially. There would be like second division quality players at best sort of thing. So there wasn't really much in defence, annoyingly. We'll look again in January for good loans there. But we have taken the lead here, which is excellent. So a defensive mistake there because Lamborghini makes a nice interception, runs through everyone and left footed puts the ball past the keeper. We do deserve this lead. The match stats suggest it. We do deserve this lead. And with 60 minutes on the clock, Bellio is not playing particularly well. So let's move Lamborghini up front. Let's get Bellew off for 
Arda Zone and swap him and, and Nan over. So Nan becomes our uh, inside forward. Siler on a 6 7, that's fine because we just can't get good performances out of the ball winning midfielder. We might change it to an anchor, maybe. You know, maybe an anchor could do we could always experiment with that but to be fair this is working so well right now i don't really want to change things too much just to get better match ratings out of he out of uh Siler. cobra is going to come off uh he's not playing quite so well i think we bring i can never forget which round which way around pinto and radikovic go i think pinto's the more playmaker and radikovic is the more sentimental attack so we'll bring pinto on and then justin che looking complacent at the back and fontan looking a little tired but he's playing very well so i'd rather not take him off so, I think we bring Hages Vallejo on for Justin Che at right back. So, 72 minutes on the clock. We've just lost possession. Rayan Cherky brings it forward for Inter Milan. Phillips is through. Finds Latura Martinez, who bangs one in from distance. When you've got a quality striker like Latura Martinez, he can just do that. It's frustrating. And this is why Inter Milan are one of the best teams in Europe, right? It's why they're one of the pot one teams. I think they were ranked... Third or fourth, we saw the ranks last time, didn't we? We got the draw. I'm sure they were ranked like fourth in European coefficient. So they're a very good team, and this is why. They've got players that can do things like that. We're not quite at that level yet, but we'll get there at some point soon, I am sure. It is frustrating to be drawing this game when we've had <laughs> so many more shots and Inter's chances have not been particularly good. Maybe it points to Etienne Green not being good enough. No, right. Let's not concede a third right now. We do not deserve to concede a third here. As Ida Zone, good interception. Silas' ball is rubbish, though. That's part of the reason he's on a poor rating, and we've been punished. <sighs> Look, it's the first game of the Champions League. If we win the next seven, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Should have won that game based on the chances we created. And some players seem inspired, look fired up, motivated, focused. That's quite a good reaction. But what I need to do is rest all our players pretty much. Training, uh, rest one day. Because in two days time, we've got PSG at home, which is another huge game for us. Also, we've made a million pounds on gate receipts for that, which is mental. 40 million in the bank now. Surely they can give me some more transfer budget. I'd like to think before January, we'll get a news item coming through saying, because the board think you're doing so well financially, here's more budget. That would be nice. So we should make some rotations for the upcoming game. However, everyone's actually fully match fit. We've got a few heavy workloads though. So... Maybe, 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 oh, I don't know what to do. Like, there's a very clear good 11 and not quite so good 11, really, if we're being honest. I'm going to bring Joe Bellingham on for his debut. Now, this is a bit risky. He's going to come on for Busio. That's one change we can make. Ardazone is going to come on for Lambordet, who's on a heavy match workload. Him and Anand swap over. They're both on medium, right? Dion's got to stay because Yakubu is still not quite fully back from his injury yet, although we'll bring him onto the uh, the bench rather than having the keeper on there. I guess we'll also bring Holick onto the bench, although, I mean, who for? Who for at this stage? I guess Vallejo, maybe, because Holick's a better right back, but he's got no match sharpness, so actually maybe Vallejo's better to have on the bench. Maybe Belich comes on for, or say Silas, but Silas on a light workload because he's just come back from his, in, uh, his suspension, doesn't he, actually? So... After all of that, maybe it's just the one change to bring Joe. And in that case, what's the point? Let's play Radikovic instead. Although we need... Uh, Bellingham's better. And we, uh, but he's not played in the team. Tom, this is... <sighs> Radikovic starts. I am overthinking massively. We're still developing. That's what it is, right? We are still developing. We've got a very good first team that can compete. It's just that we need to get to the point where we are a PSG, where we have two incredible 11s that can play... You know, an interchange like no one's business, basically, and just win games. And that's what they can do right now, right? I'm sure a lot of these people didn't play midweek in the Champions League. And if they did, they're probably of that slightly higher calibre who can manage that extra workload, right? And our players maybe can't yet. Trying to make the excuses before we end up losing every single game in today's video is PSG will temporarily go top of the table ahead of us, which is frustrating. Nuno Mendes's corner is swung to the near post, cleared by Bellio, only as far as Mbappe on the edge of the area. The one man you don't want the ball to fall to with acres of space, it's Kylian Mbappe. I wish he'd gone to Real Madrid in this on a free transfer at the end of his contract and uh, and not stayed at PSG because I wouldn't have to deal with him then, would we? It's not been a good goal. That's the most annoying part. They're laughing at us, aren't they? They're laughing at us. Like Mbappe and Latura Martinez, they're laughing at me. They think, oh, Tom thinks he's so good. 
You can get his team to do well in the Champions League and win League 1. Well, actually, no, we're going to show you what we can do. And they're both laughing at me now as they score goals to sink my mood this evening. It's frustrating. Dembele with the ball doesn't lose possession because he just dances around uh, Arda Zona. He didn't really make much of a challenge, to be fair. And now Nuno Mendes can find Kylian Mbappe. He's playing very wide on that left-hand side. Has to go all the way back to Turk, the keeper, though. Maybe I've not heard of his Turk keeper. Maybe he's a regen who's like absolutely incredible and better than Donnarumma. But maybe if we can get some shots away, there's a chance that this guy's like a young keeper who's not very good and we could maybe penalise PSG for that. But uh, we can't even hit the target right now. So unlucky for us, Marquinhos finds Hernandez, finds Xavi Simmons, who can dribble past two of our players, find Mbappe, who gets past another one, beats a fourth for pace, can deliver a ball into the middle. Well, not quite the middle. I guess middle of our half. It's Marquinhos who finds Vitinha. Back heel to Dembele who gets it past the keeper, but he was offside. I think we can all agree he was about six yards offside. Fontan finds Mika Marmol 36 minutes into this game and the man on the yellow card can bring it forward. I think we need to get Perez Vinloff playing a few more games again. Uh, he's just come back from an injury, so that's why he's not been featuring in the team much. But he's much more of a, the classic wing back. Marmel and Fontana are more fullbacks. He's more of a wing back, and it's kind of what we're using there as wing back. Because Ardazone gets us a goal back, to be fair. You know, maybe this is the way back into the game now. I would take a draw. A draw against PSG would be delightful, but we're not really playing good enough for that right. Saying that, we've limited PSG to three shots in that foot. They've had so much possession, 73% possession, but they're not doing anything with it. What was that? Get your act together and start playing football, please. So second half starts. I'm going to go straight away. I'm going to go attacking. We're going to go straight out there attacking. See what we can do with that little bit of extra edge to our game. Slightly higher pressing because we're on that attacking mentality, I feel. And Che with a good interception. If we can get ourselves another goal back here, this would be wonderful. As Justin Che finds a cross cleared. Radikovic, it goes over his head and Mbappe's got the pace to burn to get away. But his ball into the attack is rubbish. Mika Marmol's taken a knock. We might take him off then shortly as Belio collects the ball, finds one over the top to Ardazone, who's out wide. Two players arriving in the middle, but Ardazone shoots himself. It's a poor shot. Right, Mika Marmol, hampered by his injury, swap him over with Fontan, and let's get Perez Vinloff on the left-hand side. Get him bombing forward. Also, another issue, with we're going to bring Lamborday on again for Belly, who's not playing particularly well, but he can't really do much, to be fair. It's a very, very good defence. Radikovic is going to come off for... Oh, am I an idiot somehow? Sabusio's not on the bench. I thought he would be. Okay, Bellingham, on you come for your, your debut then. Let's do that. Free kick for Anand to the far post to Koba. He can't win it. Seemed like a bit of a weird free kick to go to him when he's marked by three men there, but nonetheless. We still have possession as Silas shoots from distance, hits the crossbar. Ball falls to Arda Zone, who finds Perez Vinloff and the highlight finishes. We're getting closer, aren't we? I'm going to shout encourage to the team out there as we now need to defend this PSG corner. It's off the training ground. Good challenge. At, well, it's... Okay, we are about to just concede the goal. Now. I was resigned to conceding that goal. Then Sarli gets a last ditch challenge in there after Anand messed things up. Lamble Day collects the ball, clears it. We've got 15 minutes to go in this game. In this instance, Bellingham, you go there. Be a, a shadow striker for all I care. Sarli's going to come off and we're going to bring Pinto on here as an attacking midfielder on attack. But swap him and Koba over because I think they sort of prefer that a little bit. Anything else we can sort of do a little bit? Be more expressive. Let's try that, shall we? Be more expressive. Let's... Um, there's not much... Oh, we can't do much else. Right, confirm the changes. Go. I command a goal is scored here immediately. And there is a highlight. Fontan, on his yellow card, finds Perez Vinloff, who brings... Ooh, okay, he finds Ardazone. Good. Into Joe Bellingham, his first touch that we've seen, as he finds Ardazone... Back into Job, into Matisse Lambord Day, who scores the goal. We've got ourselves back on level terms. Job gets the assist. Maybe we should have started him off in this game. And we're back to 2 2 here. Beautiful stuff. Great work from Job, by the way. A uh, little, well, not quite 1 2 with Ardazone, but almost. And then he luckily finds Lambord Day, actually. He read that quite well to just get the wrong side of a defender. In fact, was it Mbappe, actually? I think he might have beaten there with the armband on his arm. 
and then scores the goal. Right, so we stay on top of the table as things stand, two points ahead of PSG. I'm going to shout encourage again. And can we score one final goal in the final five minutes of added time here? If we can, we'll be laughing at Mbappe in... No, fella. He doesn't have the last laugh. Mbappe does not have the last laugh, and we draw. Proud to salvage something in the second half. Well done. Let's say that. Keep morale high. Marmol out for five to nine days with a stubbed toe. I mean, c come on. We, we slagged off Lamberday for a stubbed toe last time, but this is just taking the mickey. And now we need to make sure we rest the starting 11 again. Training rest one day because, again, two days time, we have got RB Salzburg in the Champions League. More games going on in the league in the background, though, on the Sunday. I assume... No one will overtake us, I don't think, if I remember correctly. No, nope. Nice have uh, caught up a little bit. They're now four points behind us, but uh, yeah, okay. We're looking good right now, especially when we're six points ahead of Monaco. And again, somehow, we are still looking good in terms of condition. I guess the, the day rest is helping things out a little bit. Uh, Marmor is coming off, obviously. We're going to bring Perez Vinloff on at left back. Belling obviously can't play for this game. We'll bring Busia back on for Radikovic. Maybe we give Fontana rest and bring Bastian on for this game with his light match workload. He needs to get a bit of game time. I'm just a little bit concerned that some of our match workloads are a bit heavy right now. Calvin Bassi maybe should start a game. I'm going to start him ahead of Ardazone. It's slightly risky maybe, but I'm doing it. But, you know, I've got to have trust and faith in all of my players if we're going to win this competition or, you know, go far in it. Bassi did score for us in between episodes. He helped us with our comeback against, uh, it was Nantes, wasn't it? We came back against, they scored first and then we scored two in the 94th and 95th minute. And he's on the ball right now uh, as he gives the ball to Justin Che. Justin Che gives the ball away though. Not a great look for him. He's not been, the, I mean, I say not the same play. He got a 10 out of 10 rating into on his first match. He's not done that again. But because he got that 10 out of 10 that first match of the season, I expect him to get a 10 out of 10 every single game and he's just not delivering. So who knows what's going on with uh, with Justin Che. He's one of the likely candidates to be replaced. He's kind of like the next sort of move we need to sort of make, I think, to make an improvement on as Dijon Drenabelio gets himself on the score sheet. Drew a couple of blanks uh, in the past few games, but he's got one today to doubt to doubt the critics, to silence the doubting critics. That's what I'm trying to say. I'll be honest, I was one of them for a little while, but I'm not doubting him anymore. I do quite admire RB Salzburg um, because they do have really, really good scouts and youth development. Like, there's always a really good handful of players at RB Salzburg. Maybe not so much in the actual game. I don't think it quite translates well in Football Manager. But in real life, they always have such good young players that end up going for a lot of money somewhere else. I mean, Haaland, for example. I guess everyone sort of saw Haaland, but he went there first, right, didn't he? As opposed to anywhere else, which is, you know, good proactive work from the scouts. Uh, they had Sheshko, or did he go straight to Leipzig? I can't remember. They probably all share the same scouts, though, don't they? De Dion Drenabelio, right? He was, he was from... He wasn't. But with 32 minutes on the clock, uh, we are looking control of this game. And ideally, we're going to get ourselves a second goal before half time to really cement ourselves in this game. As Justin Che finds a nan who can find Belgo, who finds the back of a net for a seventh of the season. That's two. You love to see it. And it takes us to half time 2 0 up. And I tell you what would be good today Dion getting himself a hat trick. That would be very nice for him to score a hat trick in the Champions League. Mostly because that would really increase his valuation, wouldn't it? Clubs would look at him and think, wow, look at this guy with a hat-trick in the Champions League. Maybe we'll sign him for £100 million. Because I would quite like £100 million. I think Matisse Lambordet has kind of proven himself to be a very good striker. And so if Belio goes, Matisse Lambordet, I think I'd put him up front. And then we can move Anand to the right and we can move uh, what's-his-face, Ardazone to the left. And that's our front three sort of set for quite some time, I feel. Bastian finds Koba as he drives forwards out wide and is sort of dodging all the RB Salzburg players who don't want to press him at all. Finds a pass into Perez Vinloff, cross to Belio, and Belio does get his hat-trick. Right, where is this million, million, hundred million pound bid, please? No, don't be offside. No, the referee's going to VAR. I don't think he was offside personally. I'm pretty sure he was, there we go. The highlight is already, or the replay's already being shown. There was no way there was an offside in there. Great first time cross from Perez Vinloff. 
and a Bellio. And maybe a Nam was offside. I can't, I don't know, but he wasn't really involved. Either way, Bellio wasn't, so it's all right. So Chelsea, have a look at this guy. You need someone to score Chelsea, don't you? Have a look at Bellio. Bid a hundred million pounds for him, you know? 120 if you want. I won't say no, I promise. As Perez Vinloff actually managed to keep the ball in play as it hits the, the corner flag there. So we've been very lucky with this one. If we score off this... RB Salzburg will feel very aggrieved, I'm sure, as Justin Che puts it over the bar. Right, 15 minutes to go here. I realize we've not made any changes yet. So Che's coming off for of Vallejo. Uh, Anand's coming off for uh, Matisse Lambert Day. Koba's coming off for Pinto. Uh, we're going to bring Bukeman off for no one because we've not got another fit centre back right now. Bassi is going to come off for Ardazone. Well, then maybe you should have given Bassi the entire match, to be fair. But, you know, it doesn't matter at this stage now. I've done the change. Ardazone is on the pitch and is going to show me why he's needs to be started. I thought he was going to score a goal. He didn't score a goal. Into Milan are very lucky. They're one up against Bayer Leverkusen right now, thanks to a penalty. And I guarantee you, Bayer Leverkusen have probably had five times more shots like we had. And they've still lost the game. Inter are getting lucky. But, again, like we said, they've got the players that mean... Luck always favours them because they've got such good players, right? As that's a very good goal from Salzburg, to be fair. That that's that's satisfying to watch, actually. Anyway, in the meantime, we are in the 89th minute now, so this one should come down as a comfortable win for us. 3-1. Could it even be 4-1? Perez Vinloff finds Pinto, Ardazone, Bellio. That's even more satisfying. What a superb team goal that was. I swear our players volleyed it, volleyed it to each other in their passing. I want to watch that again and it may won't look quite so good when I watch it again. Vallejo to Busio. Right, first time pass to Perez Vinloff. Kind of half follows it to Pinto. He half follows it to Ardazone. It's not even a half volley. There's no bounces there. It's a full volley, but not, not, not the most acrobatic of volleys. But still, we win 4-1. You love to see it. Bellio is a genius. Uh, great, that'll do for me. And we get two and a half million pounds for winning. Oh, wow. That's a lot of money. Also, let's praise Bellio. You were superb in front of goal last time. Keep it up. So I'm aware we are pretty early in the season right now. I think we come back next time for Atletico Madrid, Reims, Clermont and Antwerp. Maybe Twa if we've got time as well for the whole of November potentially. But we need to get this season kicking on a little bit, don't we?